Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rory Reed from RoryReedArt.com and today we have a very special video for you. I'm going to be going over the most recent piece that I did of the Museum of Science and Industry here in Tampa, Florida or Mosey for short. And uh, just going to go through some of the ups and downs, some of the lefts and rights that uh, I encountered while trying to make this piece. And we're going to discuss how I overcame a lot of the obstacles that I faced, as well as going into some of the history um, behind the piece and the inspiration as for why I specifically chose this uh, landscape painting to take on on this large of a scale. The piece is a 30 inch by 40 inch piece. Uh, which is pretty big for me i do add a lot of detail to my work so you know to do a piece that size is a pretty serious undertaking and um so we're just going to go over that and uh you know that's going to be the video for today before we jump right in i'd like for you guys to hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel also please share this video if you can with your family and friends uh really helps in the algorithm and helps me uh, grow the channel as well your support is greatly appreciated okay so let's jump right in so why did I decide to paint the Museum of Science, Science and Industry in Tampa, Florida? Well, one of my overall goals for the remainder of this year was to create about nine uh, Tampa landscapes, uh, Tampa Bay, Bay Area landscapes. Quite often I get messages asking me if I have any paintings of the local Tampa Bay area because when people find out that I am, uh, I do live in Tampa, they uh, you know, often ask that question. And oddly enough, I had only about three pieces, one of Ybor City, one of the uh, Skyway Bridge, and uh, I think one other one. And you know, it, it occurred to me that I didn't really paint a lot of local uh, landscapes. So I took a break from the imaginary landscapes or the conjured landscape series that I was doing. Uh, as you know, if you follow me for over the years, you know that I have a series called Conjured Landscapes, which is just landscapes I come up with off the top of my head. And um, so in that vein, I decided to, for the rest of the year, just create these Tampa landscapes so that anyone locally would be able to get them and have them in their home, their business, whatever, because there's not too many excellently painted uh, Tampa Bay area landscapes. No offense to anybody, but you know, I just wanted some good, you know, Full, rich Tampa landscapes for the uh, for the locals to have and anybody else that would enjoy them now specifically speaking the Museum of Science and Industry building is a very uh, beautiful building to look at it has one of those glass exteriors and very various different elements that makes for uh, you know a good painting so that when you look at it it's, it's not just a run-of-the-mill type of you know landscape painting the glass textures glass texture on the outside offers you an opportunity to you know painting different reflections that adds a different interest to the building at any given time of day you know if you paint it in the morning in the evening or at night um, each time of day would give a different reflection on the building and so you know the building sort of changes with the time so I did decide to go for a nighttime uh, piece with this painting and um, yeah, that was, you know, just one of the main reasons why I decided on this building. A couple other buildings locally do have this glass texture as well, as you quite uh, know already. I do, I did do a piece of the Salvador Dali Museum, which also has a similar exterior as far as the glass architecture goes. And so I just wanted to, you know, continue on in that vein because I loved how it looked with the aesthetic that I paint with, with the turquoise blue color. And, um... You know that's kind of my signature palette of what i always go to and so it uh you know sort of was a natural progression for me to choose this building as it is one of the more prominent buildings uh in the tampa bay area when you drive past it you can't help but look and wonder you know what it what is that what you know if you if you're not familiar with what it is it's a very striking building to look at as you can see So what is the Museum of Science and Industry? Well, I'm just going to read the mission statement from their website. It's uh, Mosey is the intersection of science, technology and innovation in the Tampa Bay area region where conversations and learning happen, knowledge is exchanged and new ideas are celebrated. And their vision is to be recognized as 
a thought leader and a catalyst contributing in thr to a thrive in Tampa Bay area through science, technology, and inf information. So it's basically just a big science center, has different experiments, has different uh, activities that uh, families and kids can participate in that are science related. And it's, you know, a nonprofit. So it's funded by private donations and the government here in Tampa, Florida as well. So it's a great, you know, great place for learning, a magical place when you're, you're a kid to, you know, get, uh, you know, kids that are interested in STEM, the uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. And um, yeah, it's just a great family. I always view it as a family place that you go, take the family, your kids can learn and have a great time in the atmosphere there. Look at the various cool experiments they have and the cool architecture. The, it's right across the street from the University of South Florida as well. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's in like an educational matrix, if you will. Very nice location and uh, a, a great building overall and a great place overall to go to take your kids if they're interested in that sort of thing. Now, what is my relationship with the Museum of Science and Industry? I am originally from Jamaica, as a lot of you know, and I moved to Tampa, Florida back in, I want to say, late 1997. And I can specifically remember the very first time that I drove by this Mosey building and I was kind of in awe because in Jamaica, we've never, you know, we don't have any buildings this elaborate and... Um, so it was very striking for me to look at it the first time. The exterior uh, glass structure also was blue, which was my favorite color and still is my favorite color. And um, so as a kid, you know, it was very striking to look at. And I always wonder what, what, what did they do in there? What is, was, what is that place about? And, you know, my mother at the time told me that it was, you know, the Museum of Science and Interest. They got different things science related in there. But, you know, we never actually ended up going there. And even though I've lived here in Tampa for, you know, since 1997, I still have never, ever gone to Mosey. I always looked at it as like the big mystery building. So every time I pass it, I'm always like, you know, in the back of my mind, what is, what is in there? What are they doing there? What are you know? And so that's sort of the relationship that developed uh, for me with uh, Mosey. As far as you know, I, I kind of liked over the years not knowing what they're doing in there. <laughs> you know, you know, if, you know, kind of like a funny, uh, funny thing. And interestingly enough, though, the one time that I actually did end up going to Mosey was actually for my high school prom. They had a uh, back, sort of like a back room ball, ballroom area that my high school. I went to uh, King High School here in Tampa, Florida, so. Back when I, you know, senior year, we did have our prom there. We went there at nighttime with friends and everybody from our class and, uh, you know, had a great time at prom. So that's actually the only time I've actually ever been to Mosey. And I, you know, do look forward to going there one day to uh, actually see what it is they, they're doing in there, you know. <laughs> who knows, who knows, who knows. And so taking on a painting of this scale with this much detail, a lot of uh, planning has to go into it. Firstly, I had to locate an, an adequate uh, reference photo. I did take some with my phone. I did search for some on Google, you know, the uh, public images and watching a lot of uh, video as well online of, you know, the different angles, aerial views things of that nature because whenever you do undertake an actual landscape painting if you don't go there in in, in person and are doing it uh, plein air you do run into a lot of uh, issues as far as um, you know if you're working from a photo you might not be able to tell all the different uh, intricacies and details that uh, are in the background of the piece per se. So if you don't know how it's actually laid out you won't be able to actually paint it with any sort of efficiency if, if that makes sense in addition to that um, you know I did my current uh, normal workflow I 
mocked it up in Photoshop. I did a, some color correction as well to cater it to my specific palette that I use with the turquoise blue color and tried a bunch of different uh, splashes of color as you can see here to just try to see you know what I could come up with and what colors would work well with this turquoise blue palette that I stick with mostly. We settled on this, the current one here where I was just gonna add in a few uh, pinks, lavenders, purples, and uh, greens here and there. And you know, in addition to some of the lighting with a uh, couple spots of reds and blues, um, I do. I did want the overall uh, mood of the piece to be in the turquoise blue color. So there were these other splashes of color were very, you know, um, very splotchy and rare in the piece because I did want the over, overall tone to be somewhat monochromatic as that's the style that I like most. And so from that point on, I went on. I went ahead and. Um, transferred the image to a USB, stuck it in a projector, projected the image onto the 30 by 40 inch canvas, did a rough trace of the outline, as you can see what I started there. And then from that point on, I uh, went over the outline with um, a Payne's gray color that I mixed just to get the lines uh, a little bit darker and more solidified. And then from then on, I started jumping in, washing the canvas with the turquoise blue color and proceeded on down the journey to paint the piece. Now, oddly enough, I didn't really run into a lot of issues with painting the, the, this piece. I would say the most difficult part was probably um, painting the reflection, but even so that wasn't, you know, I'm, a, I'm an experienced painter now, so even that wasn't too difficult. All I did was um, lay out the triangular uh, pieces of the glass structure just so I'd have some lines to work with from then point on from that point on I mean I uh, just painted in the reflection image itself and then went back over it again to define out the triangular structures as you can see and um, yeah that was pretty much it uh, a quick problem that I did figure out from a previous painting I did of the Dali Museum it has the same kind of triangular glass structures that are pieced together so the information that I learned from that piece is what I used to also knock out this piece as well. And other than that, learned, uh, decided on what to do with the foreground, I would say was probably the other uh, most uh, difficult piece. For 99% of the painting, I had it just flat and then I decided to add somewhat of a grass texture in the front because that is a, a lawn area um, and on the actual landscape itself. Um, the, the reference photos that I took did have like, um, you know, bushes and trees here and there. I wanted to try and incorporate one of those, but then again, I didn't want to block out any of the uh, actual architecture itself, itself, as that was the most um, interesting part of the landscape and the focal point overall. So decided to not do that and just leave the um, foreground somewhat empty. Added some tall grass with a little bit of motion in there to break up the uh the monotony so to speak and yeah that was pretty much it man other than that it was just smooth smooth sailing no complaints
And so guys, here you have it. This was the final piece. I titled it Nocturnal and Enlightenment. It's 30 inches by 40 inches and uh, it is an original painting it is at the time you're seeing this video it is going to be listed on my etsy store for sale or you can visit www.royreadart.com prints are also available fine art paper prints in uh, various sizes 8 by 10 11 by 14 16 by 20 and 24 by 30 as well great piece to have if you're into uh you know science and uh technology if you're in the Tampa Bay area as well you know this mosey is a staple of the uh, the community and a great piece to have on your world hope you guys like it enjoy it once again guys hit the thumbs up button like subscribe and please share this video to help the channel grow I'm trying to do uh, big numbers this year man I'm trying to make it to at least 1500 uh, subscribers we're well on our way there thanks to you guys also who have, have supported and subscribed thus far Follow me on all social media, guys. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube as well here, and uh, Twitch for live streaming of all this piece. I did do this Mosey piece as well, uh, start to finish on there. It was about 50 hours of uh, painting time over various sessions. And so you can see, you know, I do all my live streaming there. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Tripler 999. That's T-R-I-P-P-L-E-R 999. And other than that, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again for watching. Stay blessed. Peace.